In today's video, I'm going to show you how to build this animated pneumorphic picture slide. Many of you have requested additional pneumorphic style photo slides, so we're looking to address that today. Let's get started. Let's start with our blank slide. We'll go over to the design tab and we'll select format background. And then in the format background menu, we'll choose the new fill color and we'll choose hex code E7, E8, ED. Next, we'll go back over to the home tab and we'll go to the shapes tool and we'll create an oval. Click and drag while holding shift to create a circle. Then under the size menu in the format shape pane, let's choose lock aspect ratio and change the height and width to 21 centimeters. Then we'll click and drag our circle into place so that it covers the top right corner of the slide. In the format shape pane, choose no line and under the solid fill, change the solid fill to the same fill we just used for the background of the slide. Then select the drop shadow tool and add the first preset. Change the shadow color to hex code A1, A5, B9. Then set the blur to 25 points and the distance to 18. Then reselect the circle in the main pane and copy and paste it in place. Align the copied circle in place directly over the original circle. Then change the shadow color of this one to hex code FC, FC, FC and change the angle to 225 degrees. Finally, change the transparency to 25%. Then go up to the insert picture tool and you can choose any picture that you want, but I chose this picture of this scientist. Once you've inserted your picture under the picture format tab, go over to crop, choose the drop down menu, select crop to shape and oval. Then click on the crop button and then click and drag on the black handles until you can crop these to the same width and height. So as you can see, we've got the width and height indicators here. It looks like we, the closest we can get it is 19.04 and 19.05 centimeters, and I'm okay with that. Then click and drag on the picture to center this in the new circle that you've created for the crop and release, and then click outside of it, and there's your picture. Now click to reselect the picture, and under picture format, go over to color, select the drop down, choose more variations, select more colors, and then enter hex code, 5827ED. Then with the picture still selected over in the format picture pane, choose the far right option and under picture transparency, increase the transparency to 15%. Now position this picture circle that you just created until it's centered perfectly over the two pneumorphic circles we created. Zoom out, go to the size pane, uncheck lock aspect ratio and change the height and width both to 19 centimeters, then relock the aspect ratio, make sure that this picture is still centered, select all three circles, and group them. And I actually think we need to reduce the size of this inner picture just a little bit. So let's go back over to size, maybe take this down to about 18, five, and then recenter it over the two pneumorphic circles. And it should stay grouped. Yep, we've still got the group here. I think that looks better. Then let's select the group and duplicate it by holding alter option and dragging, and then grab the corner handle and click and drag while holding shift to reduce the size and drag it into place around here on the slide so that it overlaps the bottom of the slide and readjust as needed to get this to the perfect size for you. Then click on the group and click again on the image to select it. Go up to picture format and choose change picture. Then you can insert any picture that you want, but I just inserted this picture of some molecules from the stock images on PowerPoint. And once you have your picture in place, if it's not cropped the way you want it, then just go up to crop and you can increase the size of the picture or arrange it however else you'd like. Next, simply double click anywhere in the field to start your text box and choose any text you want. But in this case, I'm typing out science is cool. Change the font to Gibson, semi bold, change the size to 48. Then let's change the text color by coming over to the format shape pane, choosing text options and selecting gradient fill. If you see four options here, just click and drag on the two center ones to get rid of them and make sure the other two are at the start and end of the gradient here. Keep the angle at 45 degrees, click on the first stop on the left side and change the color to hex code 5827ED and then click on the second stop and change it to hex code DC. 38FF. Next, just position the text box about where you want it. And no worries, you can adjust this again later if you need to. And then let's duplicate this text box, change the font to Gibson Light, change the size to 28 points, go back to the format shape pane and text options, change the solid fill, and change the color to standard black, and insert your text. Then drag your text box into place right where you want it. And looking at this, I think we need to drag our lower circle a little bit more to the right and maybe just a little bit up with this set of text. That looks great. Finally, let's go back up to the shape tool and let's choose rounded rectangle. Click and drag to draw out your rounded rectangle about here. Go over to the size pane, 
Change the width to eight centimeters on this one. Go back to the fill and change to gradient fill. And this will automatically populate with the same fill we used for the text and that's what we want. Zoom in until you can see the little yellow handle here and drag it all the way to the right to round out the ends. Then make sure you choose no line so that there's no outline here. And let's align this shape with the left side of the text approximately. And let's make this a little bit narrower. Then let's zoom back out. Let's drag this rounded rectangle down a little bit. And I still think that looks a little thick. So let's go up to the size and let's reduce this to 0 0.31 centimeters high. And then let's duplicate the rounded rectangle twice. Get these approximately in place where you want them and then select them all. Go over to shape format, go up to align and distribute vertically. Then click on the second shape, go over to size and change the width to seven centimeters. And finally select the bottom one and change its width to six centimeters. And that's the base slide built, so let's get animating. Open the animation tab, open the animation pane, click on the science is cool text, and choose fly in. Change the property to from left, choose smooth start and bounce end, and change the duration to custom 0.7 seconds. Next, select your body text box and choose fade in. Change the start timing to with previous, and change the delay to 0.2 seconds. Next, select the large picture group, choose fly in, change the property to from top right, select smooth start and smooth end, change the start timing to with previous and change the duration to one second. Then select the small picture group, also choose fly in, change the property to from bottom left, choose smooth start and smooth end, change the start to with previous and change the duration to one second. Then select the first rounded rectangle and choose wipe. Change the property to from left, change the start timing to with previous, and change the delay to 0.5 seconds. Then reselect that top rectangle over in the field, choose animation painter, and apply the animation to both other rectangles. Click back on the second rectangle, choose its animation, change the delay to 0.7 seconds, and then click on the third rectangle, choose its animation, and change the delay to 0.9 seconds. And that's all there is to it. Let's play the slide and see how we did. Awesome, looks great. Well done today, everyone. Thanks so much for watching. If you liked this video, please click that like button and hit subscribe and click that bell so you can get notified when I come out with more videos like this one. If you have a request for a type of slide you'd like to see, please leave that in the comments and I will do my best to address it for you. In the meantime, thanks for being patient with this video. I've been working on a short film and a couple of other projects that I'm really excited about, but I should be back to my regular video schedule this week. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.